Recently, I published a video about the new Russian white-blue-white flag, a flag which recently emerged from Russia's anti-war movement. For many people in that movement, Russia's current white-blue-red flag is now too closely linked to Russia's imperial past, the rule of Vladimir Putin, and his illegal and disastrous attempt to invade Ukraine for a second time. These same feelings are now driving other proposed changes to other flags in Russia. And this week, leaders of the opposition of Bashkortostan, which is located in Russia's southern Ural Mountains, proposed a new flag for their people. And they cited similar reasons for the change as the proponents of the white-blue-white white flag. They say the current official flag has been tainted by Vladimir Putin, his oppression, and the war in Ukraine. I'm going to do my best to explain the new proposed flag of Bashkortostan and what it represents, but don't just take my word for it. Later in this video, you're going to hear from Ruslan Gabasov, the exiled leader of the Bashkir National Political Center, a leading opposition organization in Bashkortostan, and he is going to tell you exactly what this flag is all about. Hi everyone, I'm Fredo Rockwell, and if you're like I was until a few days ago, you probably don't know very much at all about Bashkortostan. Let's fix that. As a federal republic, Russia is subdivided into 85 different regions of various types, from the lowly autonomous Okrugs to top-level regions known as republics. In theory, republics are meant to have more autonomy than other regions, and are set up to represent Russia's many ethnic minority groups. There are 22 republics in total, and the largest of these, population-wise, with just over 4 million people, is the Republic of Bashkortostan. The idea that Bashkortostan enjoys meaningful autonomy is, however, like a lot of Russia's political system, a lie. In reality, Bashkortostan's leadership is composed of Kremlin stooges who do as they are told. Bashkortostan is located in the southern Ural Mountains, which arguably makes it part of Europe. It sits right next to Chelebinsk Oblast, the home of OG YouTuber NFKRZ. So if you watch Roman's videos, there's a chance you're more familiar with this general region of Russia than you might realize. The Bashkir people are considered a Turkic people and speak a language called Bashkir, which is a Turkic language. Like other Turkic peoples, there are strong linguistic and cultural ties between Bashkortostan and Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Central Asia. But formal ties are kept to a minimum, because, you know, Russia. The Bashkir are traditionally a Muslim people and have been around a long time. Their first appearance in recorded history dates back to the year 842. The idea of a republic of Bashkortostan only dates back to 1917, however, during the early chaotic phases of the Russian Revolution. One of the main heroes of that first republic of Bashkortostan was Ametzaki Valadov, who designed this flag and is the main inspirational figure for the modern Bashkir opposition. So yes, although this is a new flag for Bashkortostan, it is also a return to a previous design. The first republic of Bashkortostan, from what I've read, was a movement for autonomy, not for outright independence. The republic sided against the Bolshevik forces, the eventual winners of Russia's civil war, but Bashkortostan as an entity survived, becoming one of Soviet Russia's many, quote, autonomous republics. This period is referred to as the Second Republic. In 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed into 15 different new countries, it wasn't entirely clear what would happen to the autonomous republics inside Russia, especially the ones with the strongest national identities like Bashkortostan, and its neighboring republic, Tatarstan. A new republic of Bashkortostan was declared, the Third Republic, but again, this ended up being an autonomous region within the Russian Federation. That autonomy has steadily declined over time during the rule of Vladimir Putin. Today, the reality is that the Republic of Bashkortostan has no real autonomy at all. As Russia's government has grown more oppressive, the desire among the Bashkir people for that autonomy which they have long sought has only grown. There have been several opposition Bashkir movements, but perhaps the most prominent in recent years was called Bashkort, 
which at its peak had 18 branches across the Republic, several thousand full members, and more than 60,000 social network subscribers. Like other Bashkir groups, Bashkort called for the establishment of a fourth republic. But despite not advocating change through violence, Bashkort was banned by the Russian state for extremism. And one of its leaders, Ruslan Gabasov, sought political asylum in Lithuania. Gabasov, who you're going to hear from in just a moment, now runs the Bashkir National Political Center. So what happened to the flag this week? Well, Gabasov's organization has long called for a future fourth republic to return to the original Bashkir flag of the First Republic. But the main umbrella organization for Bashkir opposition, the Bashkir National Movement, had up until now stuck with the current official flag of the official Bashkir government. Sure, this government is aligned to Putin, but they argued that many Bashkir patriots might actually prefer the current flag, and also it just didn't seem like a big deal at the time. But things have changed because Russia has invaded Ukraine and young Bashkir men have been ordered to fight in what is essentially a Russian nationalist cause. Far, far too many of these Bashkir soldiers have been killed. I've read estimates that as many as 1,000 Bashkir boys are now dead. And the government of Bashkortostan, which remains in lockstep with Kremlin policy, has been staging pro-war rallies using the current official flag and getting women and children to pose with the current flag in Z or Z-like formations. And so, for many Bashkir people, the flag of the current government has been discredited by its association with Putin and his war in Ukraine, in exactly the same way that the white-blue-red flag has been discredited amongst so many Russian anti-war activists. On Monday, the 21st of March, the Bashkir national movement announced that from now on, Bashkir patriots should use the blue-green-white flag of Valadov's Bashkortostan as their true national and republican flag. So, let's hear from Ruslan Gabasov now. Ruslan was kind enough to speak to me a few days ago. He doesn't speak English, so you're going to hear both of us speaking Russian with English subtitles. Just so there's no misunderstanding, my Russian is terrible, and I was only able to do this with a lot of help from Google Translate and a lot of practice beforehand. Anyway. Here we go. Привет, Руслан. Добро пожаловать на видео. Здравствуйте. Мы видели новый флаг Башкортостана, каким был старый флаг. Почему Башкирскому народу важно сменить флаг именно сейчас? Дело в том, что развязанная война Путина с Украиной полностью дискредитировала сперва российский флаг. И сегодня уже российская вся общественность за рубежом отказывается от российского флага, потому что он считается флагом агрессии, флагом оккупации. Полностью себя дискредитировал. И то же самое, так как Россия на сегодняшний день, скажем так, является федерацией, но на самом деле она не является федерацией, она унитарная страна. Но так как в ней есть республики, я считаю, что они полностью колониальные на сегодняшний день ничего не решают. У них на сегодняшний день до сих пор сохранились свои флаги, но ставленники Путина, которые руководят этими республиками, они эти флаги используют точно так же в поддержку Путина, в поддержку агрессии Путина, в поддержку войны с Украиной. Под этим флагом отправляют наших ребят из Башкортостана воевать с украинским народом, убивать мирных людей в Украине. Наши парни гибнут там, Недавно проводил в Уфе, в столице Башкортостана, Ради Хабиров, глава республики Башкортостан, проводил большой митинг в поддержку Путина, в поддержку этой войны. И очень много там светились наши флаги Башкортостана. И Башкирское национальное движение, которое борется за свободный Башкортостан, борется против империи и колониализма, вынесло решение, что... Данный флаг сегодняшней республики Башкортостан, он а, себя то, то, то же, ну, точно так же дискредитировал, и он не имеет больше права а, называться флагом а, башкирского народа, флагом республики Башкортостан. Поэтому а, мы решили вернуться а, к нашему первому флагу, флагу первой башкирской республики, или по-другому валидовский флаг. А, он расцветка такая же, только а, она очередность немножко другая. Вот. Этот флаг, он, скажем так, был наш 
еще раз говорю, первый флаг нашей первой республики, когда наша республика образовалась э, волей народа, никто нас, э, скажем так, не э, сверху, не нашу республику не образовывал, наш народ сам образовал республику, сам э, придумал этот флаг. Поэтому мы решили к нему вновь вернуться, и мы надеемся, что когда э, режим Путина рухнет, а он обязательно рухнет, мы в это верим, э, наш Башкортостан... И весь народ Республики Башкорстан, многонациональный народ, потому что в Республике Башкорстан живет не только башкиры, но и татары, русские, чуваши, марицы и много других народов. Что мы все вместе, создав башкирскую политическую нацию, куда будут входить все народы, проживающие в Республике Башкорстан, под новым флагом создадим свою вновь новый Башкортостан, новую республику. Спасибо, Руслан, спасибо большое, что поговорили с нами. Пожалуйста. So, let's talk about a few things that we haven't talked about yet. Is Bashkortostan seeking independence from Russia? Well, I'm sure it depends entirely on who you ask. According to Ruslan, his organization is initially seeking genuine and meaningful autonomy from within the Russian Federation, and would actually like the Russian Federation to be more like a confederation, more like the European Union. And perhaps, if that wasn't workable or possible, then full independence is something which he thinks Bashkortostan should have the right to pursue, eventually. Personally, I think Ruslan's caution is wise. Independence can seem like a very appealing idea, but actually becoming a sovereign, independent state is something which is extremely difficult to do, and it's also extremely expensive. And independence comes with a lot more risk than a lot of independence leaders are often willing to admit. I'm sure many Russian people watching this now are actually kind of worried that their country might be about to break up into dozens of new countries, and I can understand that concern. If it's going to be avoided, then republics like Bashkortostan, Tatarstan, Kalmykia and Karelia, and all the others need to be given meaningful autonomy in the new future Russia. That's a completely legitimate thing to ask for. One last thing. Keen flag spurts may have spotted that this new proposed flag for Bashkortostan is identical to a current flag of another Russian republic, the Komi Republic, which is situated in the northern Ural Mountains. Well, don't worry, the Komi people actually want to change their flag too. As a people who speak a language which is very similar to Finnish, they prefer to assert their Scandinavian identity. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. If you would like more people to see it, then go ahead and hit the like button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.